This is a tutorial regarding film reflection number four. The title of the film is Stonewall Uprising, and it was produced in 2010. So the Stonewall Uprising, or also called the Stonewall Riots, this is considered to be the incident or event that became the cornerstone of the modern LGBT movement or community. In those days, it was called the Gay Liberation Movement. This is a description of the film from PBS. When police raided the Stonewall Inn, a popular gay bar in the Greenwich Village section of New York City, on June 28, 1969, the street erupted into violent protests that lasted for the next six days. The Stonewall riots, as they came to be known, marked a major turning point in the modern gay civil rights movement in the United States and around the world. So understand, in 1969, so you're at the end of this tumultuous decade of civil rights, anti-war. Uh, the, the gay community hadn't really experienced that yet. They hadn't had their moment. So this is their moment. Uh, in 1969, the solicitation of homosexual relations was an illegal act in New York City's and most other urban centers in the United States. So it was against the law for you know, a couple of same sex to be together. So when I say solicitation, I don't mean prostitution necessarily, but just a, having a relationship with somebody. Okay, so if you're, if you're walking down the street two men and, and, and they embrace, you could be arrested, okay? That's the way that it was back then. So where do these people go to escape the, the discrimination and the, and, the, and the hate and the ridicule? Because that's what they experienced. They would go to gay bars, okay? This is where gay people could meet and socialize, where they became refuges for gay men, women, and other what were called sexually suspect people in society's eyes anyway. You could go to these places and socialize away from public harassment, okay? But these places weren't advertised. They were illegal. So they didn't put up a sign, here we are. They were, you know, kind of indiscreet down an alley in the you know behind a building. They they didn't want to advertise where they were because they were against the law. But of course the police knew that they were there and they were bought off and so on, but they would still come and harass the patrons uh, just 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 to do it, okay? Uh, because it wasn't a real bar, they couldn't get a liquor license, so they would sell liquor without a license. You'll see in the film how this happens and where they get their liquor from. Uh, so the so the police would come in and bust some heads on occasion. Uh, in fact, they the the patrons knew at some point they're going to come back. It it became a a regular kind of uh, uh, thing that the police would do. So the Stonewall in itself was a dark, seedy, crowded bar. Again, nondescript. Doesn't want to advertise that what we are. Okay. But on June 28, 1969, they raid again. But it, this is a different type of raid. The police come and they arrest the employees inside for selling alcohol without a license. They, they, they rough up many of the patrons' customers, as was the norm, because they, they harass them regularly. They took several people into custody, okay? Uh, so this was not unusual. This is the same as it ever was. This happens all the time. This is another raid. But this time, it, it, the people that were being harassed approached it in a different way. Uh, many people milling around outside the bar did not leave. Typically, you'd scatter when the police came, but now they're not leaving, okay? Their anger was apparent and vocal as they watched their friends being forced into police vans, arrested, okay? Uh, so now they start to harass the police. They start to throw bottles and debris at the police. Of course, the police are in sh complete shock. They're, they're used to a more passive behavior from the gay community, and they didn't expect this kind of response, okay? So they actually go inside the bar and barricade themselves inside while they call for more reinforcements. So meanwhile, outside, 400 people continued to riot, and these riots went on for six days. So be clear to the, to the police that these people had reached their limit regarding police brutality, and they decided to fight back. So these riots went on for, like I said, six days. Historians have called this a spontaneous protest against the constant police harassment and social discrimination that was, I'm sorry, this, so this is the first time that lesbians, gays, transgender people united behind a common cause. They became a galvanizing force in this era of civil rights 
and the, as it was known then, gay liberation movement begins, okay? So what is the legacy of the Stonewall Uprising? Well, today's Pride Festivals is one of them, okay? So, so Stonewall became a symbol of resistance to social and political discrimination that would inspire solidarity among homosexual groups for decades. In addition to launching numerous public demonstrations to protest the lack of civil rights for gay individuals, they would often resort to tactics such as public confrontations with political officials. They would disrupt public meetings to challenge and try to change the societal norms of the time. Acceptance and respect from the establishment were no longer being humbly requested, but angrily and righteously demanded. This event set into motion new and non-discriminatory trend in government policies and laws towards the gay community. They started to lighten up a little bit. Of course, it would take decades, but it would lighten up to the point that, that, that today, of course, it's not nearly this bad to, to, to be gay in modern United States. Uh, so a year after this event, a parade was organized in New York City to, to on the anniversary of the riots to, to memorialize it. And this this uh, this idea soon spread to other cities. Today it's worldwide. So today's Pride festivals uh, that typically happen in late June, early July are to commemorate the Stonewall Uprising. That's where they came from. Okay. Okay. Let's go to our um, instructions here. So give me one second to get over there. Here you go. Okay. Uh, so this is an American experience through PBS. There's your link. Uh, documentary about the Stonewall riots, the beginnings of the gay liberation movement, as it was known those days. This is considered to be the movement's opening act. So keep in mind your readings and lectures. Has you heard of the riot, the Stonewall in before? What were the underlying reasons for the riot? What impact did this event have on society? Were you aware that the pride celebrations that, that we celebrate today were born from this event? As always, this is a personal reflection. Now, share it with anybody. If you have a personal story that you'd like to share, uh, that would only be seen by me. If you feel um, you know, that you want to do that, please feel free. Many people do. If you disagree with any of this film, that's your right. But give me valid reasons why you disagree. Don't just simply retell me the story. Tell me how the film influenced you. And I always ask these two questions with film reflections. Was there information that you learned that you did not previously know? Did the film tell a different story than the one you learned in high school? So take your emotional reaction and present it intellectually, okay? Uh, like always, your paper needs to exceed two pages. So that doesn't mean the bottom of two pages. It means to get full credit, it's got to hit the third page. There's just no other way for me to gauge what two pages means. So if you hit the third page, that's what that's what you've got to do. That, that exceeds two pages. So one and seven-eighths. One in fifteenth, sixteenths is not is not going to do it. That will be short. That's a, that's fifteen points off. So don't don't make that mistake. Um, if you have questions about a film reflection, please refer to the instructions entitled "What's a Film Reflection." This would be found in modules week one, where I've got um, instructions for all the assignments that we do, as well as video tutorials. Okay. Uh, this paper is due by midnight Monday. Uh, I don't have a date because I reuse these re recordings uh, once in a while. So uh, the, um, the the film reflections always post on a Friday, and then 11 days later it's due on Monday. Okay. Um, please don't forget with your submissions, if especially if you're using Google Docs, especially if you're going to write a two-page and one-sentence paper. Convert it to PDF. We've had the problem of the font uh, size being being uh, minimized a little bit and some papers were short. Now we have the opposite happen. Now the fonts are getting bigger and people get, are getting points off for a font being too big. So especially Google Doc people convert to PDF, but I would suggest you all do it just to be safe. It's not that difficult. Um, if you need help doing that, let me know. I can, it's a very easy thing for you to, to do, okay? This is your last film reflection. This is sad on many levels. I'm sure you're all going to miss film reflections. You After the last one, another week or so, you'll say, what's the next film? And, and there won't be one. And you'll be sad. I'm very sorry about this. So please make this one count, okay? Okay, that's all I've got, guys. Thank you.